Hi, I'm David and welcome to LeisureBit. And today we're going to be talking about electrical hookup, the current cost of energy, how campsites are moving more and more from included electric with the pitch to metered electric where you pay for your electric usage on top of the pitch. Whether it's time to ditch the hookup, we'll look and see what sort of power typical camper van and motorhome appliances use and we'll also be doing some measurement with this little gadget that I've put together to see how much it costs to run the camper van overnight on electrical hookup to keep the chill off. So, let's get cracking. So before we get into the detail, let's start with a quick question. See if you can guess which is the correct answer before we go through the video. And no cheating. Have the van on hookup at home with the heating on low for 24 hours and that's to keep the chill off. So not kind of really warm, just enough to keep the chill off. How much roughly did it cost to keep the van warm for 24 hours, plugged in at home at 34 pence a kilowatt hour? So is it A, three pounds, B, six pounds, C, eight pounds, or D, 12 pounds? We'll give you the answer at the end of the video. Currently, the price of electricity is shocking. More campsites are choosing to move from electricity included in your pitch to metered electric, which is charged on top of your pitch fee. This is mostly driven by the current cost of energy. Currently, as of February 2023, there's a price cap on energy of 34 pence a kilowatt hour. That's significantly higher than it would have been a few years back. Worth noting though, campsites can charge considerably more and sometimes less than this because they're on business tariffs rather than domestic tariffs. Campsites seem to be charging on average between 25 pence and 50 pence per unit, which is a kilowatt hour for metered electric currently, which is generally based on the cost from their energy supplier. This is based on some research I've done in January 2023. What's the difference between metered and unmetered electric? Metered electric is where you actually have a meter on the pitch where you hook up to and then you pay for how much you consume. So typically you charge a card up or you may pay on departure. Previously there hadn't been too many sites that had metered electric. Most of them were unmetered. More and more sites are moving to metered in an aim to control the costs. Now hookups not for everybody. Lots of people go off grid as they call it, where you're not actually connected to hookup. But there are a lot of people that actually do stay on grid and connect up when they go to campsites. So this is predominantly for you guys. One of the questions when you get to a campsite is, is the electricity metered or unmetered? You've probably seen a lot of the pitch costs rising and this is primarily a result of electrical costs albeit there's other increases as well to take into account but the biggest by far increase is the electrical costs and more and more campsites are choosing to move from electricity included to metered electricity which is a charge on top of the pitch fee and as we go through you'll see this can mount up quite quickly and it helps you to decide whether it would make sense to go for a campsite with included electricity or whether you pay for electricity on top of that based on what you're likely to use. And I know there's a lot of variables there because it depends on the time of the year, it depends on how warm it is outside, it depends on what you're actually running and using. But I was quite surprised actually how quickly things mount up and especially when you put a monetary value on it. We stay on a campsite for two days and we arrive and depart at 12 o'clock just to keep it simple. So we're there for 48 hours and hooked up for that time. So let's have a look at the extreme worst case. 
For simplicity, let's assume we're paying 34 pence per kilowatt hour. We stay for two days and arrive and depart at 12 p.m., giving us a full 48 hours. Hookups rated at 16 amps and assume we are using 16 amps continuously for 48 hours. I know that's extremely unlikely, but let's look at the worst case scenario cost wise. So the cost per kilowatt hour is 34 pence. It's 230 volts at 16 amps, which is 3680 watts or 3.68 kilowatts. And that's using Ohm's law, power equals voltage times current. 3.6 kilowatts times 34 pence is £1.25 an hour. And £1.25 times 48 hours is £60. So the maximum potential exposure in this case is £60 which is on top of the pitch fees. So you might have paid, say, £20 a night or £25 a night for the pitch fee. If you'd paid £25 a night, that would have been £50 plus £60 here. Now, again, it's highly unlikely we would ever use 16 amps continuously. Let's assume we're on a campsite that is charging 50 pence a kilowatt hour and wholesale costs have been up around that mark. Um, you would pay with a 6 amp hookup if you consumed 6 amps continuously for 24 hours you would pay £16.56 on top of your pitch fees. With a 10 amp hookup which are fairly common £27.60 and with a 16 amp hookup at 50 pence a unit £44.60 and 16 pence above the pitch fees for a 24 hour period. That is quite shocking. Pitches with meters on, you normally know when you arrive or when you're checking because it's normally quite clear whether electricity is included and whether it's 6 amp, 10 amp, 16 amp or any other amperage. They're the common ones that you'd see. Um, I've not seen many 6 amp ones although I have come across them. It's mainly 10 amp and 16 amp. Hopefully the cost will come down in time. Keep our fingers crossed for that because as we all know it's costing a fortune at the moment. The other thing to be mindful of if you are staying on a site with electricity included try and be respectful with it, try not to waste it because at the cost at the moment not only is it wasting valuable resources and you know potentially driving up environmental pollution it also means ultimately if people use and waste electricity it'll end up driving the campsite prices up and we're seeing that already um, I was quite shocked recently seeing some of the prices at the Caravan and Moss Home Club which do give electricity included there and how much they've gone up. But what was refreshing is some sites where they are no longer giving electricity included and are charging by the meter have reduced their pitch fees. Not all of them, but respect to those that have, because I think that makes sense then. And it also gives choice. I remember when I first started caravanning and motorhoming, you used to pay a little bit extra for electricity on the pitch. Used to be two or three pounds typically. <laughs> Let's have a look now at a few things. It'll typically be different if you've got different types of appliances, but it gives you a general idea. You can always check in the manual to see what consumption your particular device um, uses. The whale space heater, the whale hot water heater, and the microwave. And we're gonna just check the power using one of these, which is a plug-in power meter. But on the main feed-in, um, as you'll see in the pictures, we've got one of these installed. You can see that there. Um, this particular one is Wi-Fi enabled, um, and you'll see the stats as we run through, which is, is coming directly off this. You can actually set a power limit on there. It's also got limits for voltage and things like that. But we'll cover them off in another video 
a tech video specifically about that. I didn't want to make this too technical. It was more around just bringing to life the cost and the power consumption of different things and the options when you go to a campsite or when you're choosing campsites. So when you go to a campsite and you're on a meter, you don't kind of sit there and think, ah, it'll only be a couple of pounds like it used to, maybe three pound at the most, or even a fiver, and then get a 20 pound bill or something like that in for it. Gives you a bit of a flavor there. So let's have a look and see how much the microwave consumes. So it's on standby at the moment and it's consuming 0.7 watts. But now let's pop something for lunch in. That's going to take five minutes. So. You see there the power is running about 1200 watts. While the microwave's running there, just while I'm waiting for the dinner to cook, you can see the total consumption of the vans, about 1230 watts. And it's consuming about 5.7 amps. I've actually got the charger switched off at the moment as well, so it's fairly representative of the power consumption being used by the van itself. <laughs> back down to 0 0.7 watts there and there we go one cooked lunch right then let's tuck into this see if it's tasty right let's pop some water in so we can get the water heater going 25 litres should do us to remember to turn the tap off here there we go We'll just leave that to fill up now and then we can fill the water heater. And we'll now turn the pump on. I'll just let the water pull through there now into the sink. There we go, that's now running through. So we can turn that off and then we can get that filled up the hot water tank so that we don't have to worry about running it empty. And then we can measure how much power that uses. Right, we're now going to switch on the water heater, which is here. I'm going to switch it on the first setting at first and see how much power it consumes. So that seems to be using between 730 and 740 watts. Let's switch it up to second power and see how much it's using then. So on the second power level it's using about 1400 watts or just over 1420 watts and that's for the water heater. So let's try the heater now which is this one and we're going to switch it on to Switch the heater on to one bar there, and let's see how much power that consumes. So that's consuming about 730 watts on one, the first setting, so one squiggle. Now, it's worth noting that I haven't got the charger switched on to avoid upsetting the results on how much things use, but the 12 volt side of the heater will be consuming some power there. So I would say probably 750 watts. So let's now change the heat on to two. So there we go. We're on two squiggles there. And let's see how much power that consumes. So that's taken it to just a little over 1400 watts. So 1.4 kilowatts there. So let's try it on its highest setting on electric, which is three. Let's do that now. And let's see how much power that consumes. So that's consuming about 2,500 watts, or just over 12 amps. And again, just to call out, the charger's not running, so there'd be an additional load there. So if you're on a 10 amp hookup there, you would have a challenge with that, because it would be over the power needed for a 10 amp hookup. I'm going to switch it down now to the lower setting, the 2, and then turn the water heater back on. As I've got it connected up to via a main socket, 13 amps is the maximum I can draw there without causing an issue and blowing the fuse. So let's turn that down now and then let's turn the water heater back on on one. There we go. So we've got the water heater set on one and we've got the heating on two now. 
So let's have a look and see how much power that consumes. This is a typical setting I would have it if we're away and plugged into electrical hookup. That's consuming about 2100 watts or about 9.3 amps. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch the charger on um, just to give an indication. Now the battery's not far off full because um, it had fully charged um, but I have let it run down and I made myself a coffee and things just to drop a bit of the power out of the battery without the mains hookup connected obviously. <laughs> We're on 9.2 amps so let's see what difference it makes. Let's do that now. With the charger switched on, the power has now gone up to 10.23 amps. So if you're on a 10 amp hookup, that would take it over the limit there. So what I've done now is I had the charger set at 15 amps when we switched that on. I've now upped it to 30 amps and it's outputting 29.2 amps out of there. And the reason it's not outputting the full 30 is we're getting just under an amp for the solar and the Victron stuff's networked so it's trying to keep a kind of 30 amp feed going in there. We're now running at 11.4 amps. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch off the heater and the water heater and just give it a few moments and see how much the charge is consuming itself. So that's those switched off. With just the charger on now we're consuming 2.75 amps or just over 470 watts and again that's with it set at 30 amps and it's outputting about 29.2 so you're probably looking just shy of 500 watts at full output from the charger that's with the Victron one obviously if you had the standard 20 amp one assume the efficiencies were the same it would be about two-thirds of that current consumption so that gives you a little bit of an idea of the different things running in the van and obviously if you put a kettle on they vary quite considerably same with a toaster um, but they're normally marked up how much power they consume so it's a little bit of an experiment i'm going to leave the heat set like this so we've got the so we've got the water on one squiggle and the heating on two squiggles and we've got it set there in fact we'll put it up one more just to keep it reasonably warm and then We'll see how much power that consumes come tomorrow morning and then we'll work out what the rough cost is to run each hour. On the measurement at the moment it's just over one kilowatt uh, which is what I've used when I've been just doing the various bits of testing here. So we'll see where we get to on that one and then that'll give us how much it costs us if we plug in at home or plug into a hookup to run the van with the heating on the charger on which I've reduced to 15 amps just to give a fair uh, kind of average if that makes sense obviously at 30 amps it would consume more power so let's see how we get on here's a summary of what we've tested showing how much power each of the appliances consume and how much current if you've got multiple things running at once you need to add this up and you always need to make sure that the total power doesn't exceed the capacity of the outlet you're plugged into. That gives you a bit of a view on how much power everything uses and you can see how it stacks up you know if you've got the heater on three if you've got the hot water on two and you're using hot water and things like that and your battery's down a bit and the charger's on you can have pull some power through there and that power then is converting into cash so it's costing us when it's running let us know how you guys get on on campsites you know have you been to ones with a meter how much have you ended up paying in, on those ones recently last time i was on one with a meter was at coniston and it cost a couple of pound there i think it was about three pound that was obviously in slightly warmer times but i did use the heating at that point i think it was kind of march april time <laughs> So at the start of the video we asked you how much do you think it cost to keep the van warm overnight and for 24 hours just to keep the chill off so we're not talking about having it toasty warm it's just to keep the chill off and the options were A 
three pounds, B six pounds, C eight pounds, or D twelve pounds. And if you've been watching through, you're probably going to be pretty close to it now, I would reckon. Uh, even if you guessed wrongly originally, the actual answer for my particular van, and bear in mind it can vary slightly depending on your van as well, on electrical hookup, it costs approximately £8 at this time of the year to keep the chill off for 24 hours. And that's something to consider if you're plugging your van in on hookup at home. Did you get the answer right? Well done. If not, don't worry, because sometimes if you think it used to cost next to nothing, it cost you a couple of pounds, but it really can mount up. Imagine if you left your van plugged in all week. Um, not that I forgot to unplug it, of course. Mm. And it's got me thinking. I believe it is significantly cheaper at the moment to heat your van on LPG or diesel than it is to actually heat it on electric. Now there's some other considerations to bring in because you obviously if you plug in to hook up you've then got uh, the ability to use your sockets if you haven't got an inverter, you're also charging your battery and so on and so forth. So there's those things to consider but on a pure cost basis which quite frankly is shocking it's cheaper to run it on fossil fuels than it is to run it on electricity. How can that be? Hopefully the situation will change soon and the price of electricity will come back down to a reasonable rate. I think once you get below 20 pence a kilowatt hour, it kind of becomes more economical. I believe we'll do a proper test on this uh, moving forward. I'm just trying to run my LPG tank down at the moment because I want to fit an electric solenoid valve rather than the manual one so it switches on and off automatically as you do but common sense at the moment says it is not costing eight pound a day in LPG to keep the van warm. Let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comments below. Pitch fees going up in price, metered electric, metered electric coming in without the pitch fees coming down in some instances the fact that it can be cheaper to run your van on diesel or on LPG, if you find the content useful, really genuinely appreciate if you subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost anything to do so. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it useful and I'll catch you next time. Bye. Is there